I am always getting requests on email or phone calls on the next video we should uh, tackle. And 1969 glue-in glass problems is one I hear over and over again. And this car came in the other day, interesting story. It was stolen over a decade ago and the people just wrote it off and it recently showed up uh, in a barn in Montana and the guys got it back. And so they, they want to put a little money into it and they brought it here and I said, hey, let me, let me work on this. Because your average guy doesn't even know where to start. You got multiple problems going on in here usually. Look at this. It's come unglued. You got weather stapling problems. You got your belt line kit uh, disintegrating here. You got the door hinge falling apart. Uh, you got misalignment here. It's hitting up here and chipping up the uh, stainless all along here. Um, lots of problems here. So uh, we're going to go through and show you how to service your 1969 door glass. Okay, before we uh, um, get this to ever line up, we're going to have to address this. In a previous uh, video, I show you how to rebuild hinges. On this one, we're going to cheat. This guy's on a budget. Um, we're going to rebuild the upper hinge only and leave it on the car. The beauty about leaving the hinge on the car is you don't lose alignment, assuming the alignment was correct before they got severely worn. So we're going to do a quickie pin and bushing rebuild on the upper hinge. Got my door nice and tight and it was relatively painless. Okay, quick tips on this hinge rebuild. From the factory, they're driven from the bottom up. It's really kind of cumbersome to try to go this way. So you need to do like the factory and do, do the pin from the bottom up. Notice the factory swedged them here. That was a safety precaution. The splines really keep the pin in place. So, so you're gonna have a hard time replicating a, a, a swedge there. But if it makes you feel better, uh, you can get the little one-way keepers that slide on there, those little lock washer things, or put a little tack weld on there. This is worse than I thought. Look at here. Somebody got in here and uh, took the track out. There's a track that this rolls in. So we're, we're missing that part. I see we got the wrong fasteners here. You see people have drilled trying to uh, line it up for some reason. Man, this is completely boogered in here. So from one end to the other, this is going to need help. Oh, and look how bent the uh, arm is on the regulator. The good news is um, West Coast Classic Cougar is the only website in planet Earth that has every single nut, bolt, and clip uh, on our website, on our online catalog, for sale, used, uh, some new pieces, but I mean everything I can point to here is diagrammed and part numbered and available on the website, and of course this all translates to Mustang too. <laughs> Notice how we have two holes here. These two holes coincide with the two holes, two bolts on this bracket. Look at that, they were thinking ahead. Roll it up 
a little more and notice the hole lined up nicely for that 7 sixteenths. Don't lose this nut. This is a nut that's meant to cause interference when it goes on so it doesn't work its way off. There we go. Yeah, problems left and right. I wonder what the idea there was. Hmm. Why we're here, of course why we're here, we're going to address this belt line molding. Notice that big chunks are just completely gone and it's hard and brittle and embedded in it is usually something we call Mount St. Helens ash. And Mount St. Helens ash is the equivalent to ground glass. And you'll see scratches running vertically on your gra old glass a lot of times. That's from, that's from uh, particles getting uh, embedded in this hard rubber or the hard rubber itself becoming so hard that it scratches. This one's still a little bit pliable, but it's time for it to go. So we got a Phillips screw at the back. It's important you get the right uh, belt line kit because there's four different versions for 69 alone. Uh, XR7 uses a uh, piece of trim here. Well, that definitely changes the type of belt line kit because the belt line will attach to this instead of the door. So an XR7 kit won't work on a standard. The reason I mention this, and over the years a lot of people have added these to their standards and their eliminators off the XR7 because they think they look good. So. If you have this piece of trim on your car, uh, even though it's not an XR7, better order the XR7 kit. This is the other part of the belt line kit. I usually, if, if the original is in good shape, and still flexible, and still has its uh, felt on it, I usually don't mess with it. Reason being is these were stapled from the factory. Now, you and I don't have staple guns that are going to work like that. So the kit will come with these little tiny staples, but what a pain to uh, get it all to line up and poke the staples through by hand and bend them over. Some people choose to use uh, tiny little Phillips screws. Other people have used pop rivets. Uh, I've seen people use uh, regular uh, mechanics wire and go through there and twist it from the back. But I'm just going to put these on the shelf and uh, someday if they replace these uh, ugly door panels and the new set of door panels needs it replaced, they'll have these sitting on the shelf. might actually be uh, salvageable. We'll have to go check it out. Wow, everything that can go wrong has gone wrong inside this door. Uh, multiple layers of who knows what kind of adhesive in here. Uh, not factory stuff. This plate looks bent. I don't know how you'd bend that. Good news, I found the track in the bottom of the door, so we'll have that piece to put back. Uh, these threads going in here look stripped. Wrong bolts going into them. This piece, when you roll the window down, is what rests on the bumper, so that will have to be bonded back in place. Uh, what was the other piece? Uh, oh, this guy here was missing its keeper. This has to be free floating, so uh, missing a keeper there. Uh, this is intact. Uh, this is 69 only, so uh, take care of these. They're really hard to come by. Uh, driver is different than passenger side, 69 only. I've obtained all my uh, replacement parts here. And uh, look at this, I found something else in the door that's uh, bad. Look at that. It's uh, broke, it's weld. You can weld these. 
Um, everybody sells brand new Chinese ones. We could sell those. We'd rather sell you something with a little patina on it for the same price. I always find that original FOMOCO is, is better than Chinese. I don't know why. Not always, but most of the time. So uh, I, I've noticed from the factory these not having good welds, uh, you know, or they break apart from stress, but that nut needs to be free floating there. And uh, you don't want to see a lot of corrosion here or any other problems. Front is the same as back on the driver's side door, but do know passenger side uh, is a different application. Now you're going to be, once you get your piece here, you're going to be tempted to take out this factory uh, glue. And uh, wow, it's really hard to get out. Don't take it out. We're going to clean it up. We're going to leave it there. Uh, if it is all boogered and falling apart and somebody's attempted to take it off, well, then you got to finish the job and just buy a lot more adhesive to fill this gap. But do know that uh, whenever I see these release, they're not coming unglued from the die cast. They're coming unglued glued from the glass. And uh, they've got it centered in there right, so let's not mess with it. Lots of ways to clean this. I am going to use my bead blaster to clean this up. Here's one of the biggest problems on your 69 and 70 uh, door glass in getting slop. These little slides snap in uh, bushings, if you will. Look, look how that's worn down in time. Look, look at that divot there. I mean, you would think that wouldn't matter, but just a little bit uh, um, of slide here, or, or a slack here, is going to make a big difference up here. So, you know, look at this original here. See that? We got, we got slop there. Um, you would think that I would tell you, hey, let's just buy the brand new ones. They're cheap, snap them in, you're done. But look at this. They're worse than wore out ones. I mean, that's terrible. Don't buy the new ones. They're junk. But if you can look real close, you might see that they're just not spot on. Here's my suggestion. On the really worn ones like this that have a big divot in it, throw those away. If they're cracked, throw them away and buy a good used one off our website. On the rest of them, here's what you do. The wear pattern, as you can see, is always off to one side. Why not just flip these around so we work on a new side uh, and the wear pattern won't be as bad. So it's real easy. Just push them out from the back. snap them back in place and there you go we've produced another video to show you how not to spend money on our website and get away uh, scot-free but it's really uh, frustrating when you put your door all back together you buy all these products and what it's worse than it was before anyway Okay, we've gone out to the yard here and plasma cut open a bad door here. And it was truly a bad door. Don't 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 worry. I mean, look, at, look, at, look at the bondo there. That's a bad door. We get we, we get a lot of comments. People think we ruin good parts here. Anyway, um, this is another angle to show how you how everything goes together. Uh, again, look at your brackets. They are they're glued uh, one inch back there. And if you could see in here and you can't you'd see, well, this one isn't quite one inch, so they missed it when they re-glued this. And uh, they did it in silicone, so that is prone to failure. Silicone is not going to last on these. But this gives you an idea how everything should look. This little bracket stays about this spot, so when it goes down, it hits this. Uh, everything looks correctly in place. These bars are in the right place, but this one is broken. Ah, remember I was saying how these sometimes break? Look at that, broken up there. And I'll show you what it looks like as it goes up and down. Notice the stop. You got an adjustment. It'll adjust this way and adjust this way. Down here. This bar will just in and out. 
again in and out and we also have a stop back here and it is right in this little stop big stop right here okay notice the tiny amount of slop here from the from the wear but look how much it translates up here into flopping around now now to be uh, fair if the door panel was here that would help uh, keep it from flopping around but uh, as you can see oh, look back here it is missing one of these altogether so that's really going to cause slop and this bar is broken from its mount multiple problems going on in this door We need to prep our glass here. We gotta get every bit of contaminant off this glass. We need to scrape, steel wool, acetone, everything we can to uh, make this a, a clean environment for the new glue to stick. Okay, this is an important part. We're gonna test fit the brackets before we put them on. And we want one inch. That's where the factory put them, exactly one inch. And I'm gonna put a mark there so we know where to put it. And then the back. Again, one inch. And the edge of the glass is right in there. So let's tap this. There we go. And we have one more piece. We don't need to measure in this because look, the outline's still there. Yeah, that's where it was from the factory. And that goes, if you measure from the tip of the glass up front, we're at 18 and three quarters. And again, this is the part that when you roll your window all the way down, hits the stop. Okay, this is a, a part you could probably skip, but I choose to go the extra mile here. It's a little risky. I'm going to grind on this glass. And the reason I'm going to grind on this glass is the adhesive is going to stick better to a porous area than a smooth area. But we certainly don't want to get anywhere above this tape. Now, uh, 90 grit sandpaper is another way and really probably smarter because if the grinder hits this edge wrong being tempered glass poof there goes your whole piece of glass so safer way to do it probably sandpaper I've seen people tape them off and sandblast it uh, again you know, one little wander with the wand and you've 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 damaged your glass Remember not to dilly-dally with your uh, grinder in any one place because tempered glass reacts uh, adversely to sudden temperature changes. So heat, poof, there it goes. Again, maybe the smarter idea is take a little more time with some sandpaper. Let's go ahead and clean this up. Get any additional contamination off.
Okay, 3M suggests that you buy their $350 applicator. No, it's not really that much. In fact, it would be a good investment if you were doing this on a regular basis, but heck no. Uh, $1.99 buys you a uh, um, caulk gun, hose clamp, two rusty old bolts I found that kind of fit in there. So it's cumbersome. Um, it's not the best, but I think it's going to make glue come out the end. And we're supposed to do this until both colors of glue come out the end in equal amounts. So now we're going to start our glue process. And the instructions say you want to put enough on there that it does ooze out on the edges a little bit. And just for good measure, we'll put a thin bead at the very bottom of the track. There we go. Now let's get the opposite side of the glass. I would just leave that alone, I wouldn't smear it around, just leave it there. We know it's in the right place because our marks are clear. Tap it with a hammer to get it just a little bit more this way. There we go, now we'll do the front one. One applicator is enough to do this piece. I'm not going to mess with this piece. It's on there good. This piece, this piece, this piece, and have a little left over. Most likely, one applicator would also do your quarter glass. So to do four pieces of glass, you will need uh, two of these applicators. Uh, the instructions say three or four hours, I think. But I had an instance where it moved on me when I did it after five hours. So I'm gonna let this sit over the weekend. Uh, probably 24 hours would be ample. I suggest more than the manufacturer's amount of time. So Monday, I will get back on this and we'll do some more. Monday morning and it looks great. It's when you put your thumbnail in this, you'll see that it's just a little bit flexible and that's exactly how it's supposed to be. I'm gonna touch bases on what to do when you found that you uh, get into your car and it's been glued, but glued in the wrong spot. And believe me, I've seen it all. Here's one right here. Some unfortunate soul glued the uh, driver's side bracket to the passenger side. And there's a couple ways to get it off. If they use silicone, which so many times they do, here's the way I, I do silicone, how, how I take a bracket off that's uh, done with silicone. Resist using a hammer. <laughs> yeah, I've tried that before. and. Uh, the jarring seems to almost always break the glass. What I do to get one unglued is I put it in the vise and I just, and this does feel like silicone in this, so I think this is gonna come undone. Now, this one, I'm not gonna wrestle it all day. It's holding pretty good. So here's the next, next best trick. It's time consuming and you're going to ruin a bracket, but the brackets are inexpensive. So what we're going to do, and I won't take the time on video to do it, is we're going to cut right along here. 
And the safe way to do that is to clamp something, uh, a piece of wood here to use as a guide with two C clamps and just get your high speed grinder out and sacrifice the bracket all the way across there. I actually got a little ahead of myself this weekend and started working on this without the camera. So I've already cleaned up this regulator. And by the way, I said the regulator was junk. Well, I spent some time straightening out this arm and then I noticed it was loose right here and I've already beat on it, but here it was really loose in that area. And that's common, it, it, it hogs out right in here from stress. So this is an easy fix. That now is 100% tight. That's all you gotta do. Lubricate here, lubricate here. Again, why we weren't filming, uh, I got a little ahead of myself and started cleaning this up, but I want, I want to you know, make sure you get this. So many people will just put fresh grease on top of old grease. Know that you're building up um, the wrong tolerance and your roller won't go in here. So it's really, it's really important that you get in here with a screwdriver and get all the grease out of here, every bit of it you can. Then go back with a wire brush and try to make it like new, like factory. Same with the uh, poles, guides that are in the door, every piece that has moving parts, let's get it all clean. And axle grease is not what you wanna use here. Most white lithium grease is too runny. You need something that will stay. And this, uh, this is what we sell on our website. Uh, Napa has a version of it that's the same thing really. And uh, it withstands heat comes out, you know, kind of thick. So liberal amounts of this heat resistant lubricant and uh, in every joint of the regulator. And then I'm gonna clean these up real good and we're gonna lubricate all in there. Getting all the grease off here. And we can even take the little wire brush. While we're at it, um, your, your door latch always needs some grease and otherwise it's metal on metal and you're wearing the thing out and one day it just won't come undone. Normally you'd take your stops out before you move your glass. But on this car, since it was all disassembled and unglued inside the car, we didn't have to remove the stops. So do know that you will have to take these stops out prior to installing the glass. And front stop. And just a reminder, we, if you see any of this stuff missing, don't ignore it. Yeah, you can make it work without it, but you aren't gonna make it work well. We have every nut, bolt, and clip identified on our website. So if you're missing any of it, we have it. It's the same for Mustang and Cougar. And most of it um, is the same 69 to 70. You get into 70 bolt-in stuff, it's a little different. Now this is the part I don't like. It's kind of hard to fish that uh, glass back in the door with the brackets glued on it. Some people prefer to glue on the brackets while they're still inside the door. If you got really nice paint and you don't want to mess up your new weather strip, I think that's actually a good idea. But we're going to show you how to do it this way. And it ain't easy, to be honest with you. Okay, you need to back off these screws so nothing's protruding here. You need to take off the floating stud, don't lose the retainer. And this is where it's tricky. The, the factory workers just probably had it down real easy. <laughs> okay, this is never fluid but I'm gonna to try to make it look somewhat fluid. This is kind of tricky, actually. I always struggle with this. Now 
You might want two layers of tape there. Next, we're gonna install these. And you know, these are the same left to right, uh, uh, front to back. Just know that they face forward. 70 differs in 69. They improved them in 70 by putting a stud in there and having a nut on the stud. That's the only real difference between 69 and 70. So even they, you can uh, use between the two years. It's nice to have a block of wood so you don't create a, a guillotine here while you're Yeah, uh, don't put your uh, grease tube under your uh, foot. Yeah, that's kind of embarrassing. So we're going to put an extra liberal amount of grease on everything. Just got to put it somewhere. Oh, uh, by the way, while you're in here, it's one of these while you're at it tips. These 6970 doors always rust out in the corners. Dig out all the dirt and the rust and put your favorite anti-rust stuff in here. Check this out. Get in there and see if you can't get some, dig the dirt out and put some stuff back there, pour 15, whatever your favorite stuff is. Okay, let's put in our stops. Okay, this is the part that just takes finesse and time. I'm going to show you where the adjustment points are. This is your stop to stop the front of your door glass. And sometimes if you just put it back where it was, you get lucky. Don't, don't count on it. Also, within the stop, there's that rubber piece that moves back and forth. Here is your other adjustable stop that uh, controls how high your back glass goes up. Of course, the control for how far it can go down is the rubber stop. It's not adjustable. The rubber stop at the bottom there. And we got, uh, this is your adjustment for where the glass rides within the door. See these elongated holes that the, the um, window regulator are, is bolted to? The whole assembly can move this way and that based on loosening these four holes. Lastly, to get the tilt of your window right, tilt in, tilt out, you have these nuts right here. And see how I can move, 
Now watch the door glass up here as I move it back and forth. Okay, I'm going to uh, replace the weather strip here. Probably should have done it earlier, but I, I didn't want to bang it up as the door went in and out. Plus, I wanted to show you how to do it while it's still in the car. You can just barely get to that Phillips screw there. In fact, probably need to loosen this stop to get it far enough up. Then this item should just slide right out. And do know there are probably four manufacturers of this. Currently, we are using uh, Daniel Carpenter's version. It's done on original Ford tooling. Uh, we're always looking for feedback on uh, who's got the best pieces. So if you're happy with ours or unhappy about it, we want to hear it. We change suppliers periodically when a better version comes on the market. And let's put a little bit of our lube on here. A little bit of lubrication really can help matters. And fill up screw back in the hole. I would replace this piece, but notice it's bonded to the door weather strip. So that's another day. Shouldn't have to slam the door. Everything lines up nice. And when you, let, when you uh, release the door, it doesn't go pop, it just opens. Nice and tight here. You shouldn't hear any click, 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 rattle, rattle. One thing that makes me mad though, is I get it all done. I'm cleaning the glass. This is an air conditioned car. This glass has been replaced before. This is clear glass. All the other glass in the car is tinted. So now we're gonna do a second video on how to install tinted glass. Thanks for watching. Okay, bonus material here. A lot of confusion throughout the years on coupe versus convertible, 69 versus 70, glue in 70 versus bolt in 70, mixing and matching. Lots of misinformation in there in print. I'm going to be a little arrogant here. If they don't agree with me, they're wrong. This is the absolute truth. And when the other guy on the other end of the phone's arguing with you, say, how many hundreds of these cars do you have lined up in a row? And how many hundreds of pieces of glass do you have on the shelf? I know I'm being arrogant, but I'm trying to drive a point here. 70, this was a much better design. So if you have a chance to convert your 69, you don't care about uh, originality, this is the way to go. But here's where people make the mistake. Everything's different. When I say everything, the quarter glass is different. Here's why the quarter glass is different. They put the stainless steel trim back here in 70. Much better design, actually. So they had to reduce the width of this glass, and then they had to compensate on the door glass by lengthening it. Now, uh, that's confusing to a lot of folks because they look at their early 70, first three months of production or something, and say, oh, I got the old 69 glue-in glass. No, you don't. You got 70 glue in glass. It's still glued in like 69. It has a 69 window regulator, 69 bracketry. But again, your trim is here. So they had to decrease the size here and increase the size here. So this is all on its own. 69, here we go. Here's the trim here. Weaker design, hard to find piece of trim. There's one more thing. Convertible had a shorter quarter glass than coupe. Convertible is also the same as Mustang coupe and Mustang convertible. So you can't mix and match coupe and convertible. You can't mix and match 69 and 70. Whenever you change glass, you gotta take it in its entirety. And I mean everything, including the regulator. Look at the regulator. In 70, 
you got a straight arm here. In 69, look at that dog leg. That dog leg is there to clear the bracketry. As if I didn't throw enough information at you already, here's one more minor detail that could hang you up if you don't know what you're looking for. If you look in the Master Parts catalog, it gives different part numbers for the early versus late glass. That would make you think that there was a difference in early uh, versus late glass. No, it was a fastener change. Look at this stud, and we got the C9ZZ casting number on here, so this bracket is the same as 69. You know, this is how they fastened, and then your, your regulator arm would have gone in there. This is, is the fastener uh, system for, for 69 and early 70. Look at the depth of that stud. Now, let's go look at a window with a 70 casting number, as seen here, D0ZB. Look at, the, look at the depth of that stud. This is the type of fastener they used in 70. It slid on there. Anyway, trust me, it slid on there. <laughs> So, uh, as you're mixing and matching and, and can't figure out why things aren't jiving, there's one more thing that when you're swapping, you have to take them in their entirety, every little fastener. Crazy.